ओके वेंकटेश यस यस सो द ओरिजिनल कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ स्टिफनेस मॉडिफायर इटसेल्फ इज सेइंग दैट इफ यू कंस्ट्रक्ट अ बीम एंड इफ यू लोड इट फुली देन द आफ्टर डिफ्लेक्शन आफ्टर जनरेशन ऑफ क्रैक्स इन दैट बीम द स्ट्रेंथ ऑफ द बीम विल बी रिड्यूस्ड टू ओनली 35% it will be able to take loads of only 35% according to this concept the buildings which were constructed before the stiffness modifier concept those should have fallen down because we have only taken 50% extra strength in design 1.5 safety factor and it has reduced to even higher than half percent of so all the beams should have fallen down if we go according to this concept that this much amount of cracks has developed that this beam will fall down but have you seen any beams fallen down like this most of the indian structures are standing very strongly which were not designed by stiffness modifiers so this is a very advanced concept that has been seen in college which are providing very advanced labs there they have noticed some amount of crack develops when the structure is loaded and the strength of the structure is reduced but it is not reduced to this amount like 75% 65% in case of flat 75 65 30% so practically we are not experiencing this concept on field okay practically we are not experiencing this concept on field this is the cherry on the cake this is a design parameter that you can apply very national product like nuclear plants power stations are very which are very important like north grid power stations for hospitals that are very important like hospitals in zone 4 and zone 5 where you can even you cannot handle even a single crack there for normal buildings for residential buildings for institutional buildings in zone 3 4 we should avoid using this one okay we never see this amount of cracking in beams after loading that its strength or its stiffness reduced to 65% for slab it reduced to 75% i haven't seen it i haven't seen that 90% of indian buildings have fallen down due to this concept i have designed buildings without stiffness modifiers so this is a concept of rich country developed country okay you cannot provide take stiffness modifiers in normal buildings and submit design sheets to your clients you will receive a high amount of reinforcements like 30 50 to 60% higher reinforcement in beams 70 to 80% higher reinforcement in slabs and 20 to 30% higher reinforcement in columns and shear walls so your client will not accept your designs your client is not coming to you only he is going to three four more structural engineers design engineers in your city so you cannot take stiffness modifiers roughly like in india satya is asking why is code 1893 as stiffness modifiers is code has included this stiffness modifiers to avail your brain that this kind of concept is running in the world so if you are designing a very important building like like fire stations nuclear buildings power stations very important hospitals in key locations of borders where zone is 4 or 5 where you can not handle even a single crack earthquake proof buildings okay then you need to apply stiffness modifiers if you want to be 100% sure after loading it will suffice the crack but for normal buildings you should avoid now let me tell you where we can include the stiffness modifiers in normal building so this is the case here you can see let me share the case here you can see. whenever you are doing a core drilling in the beam itself then you have to provide stiffness modifiers you have to reduce the strength of the beam to 60% 70% because you have drilled a core drill. in many of cases in residential buildings and in commercial building you will see a practice that they will pass a sanitary pipe from the center of the beam so understood that it is very important not to pass sanitary pipes from the shear area advisable to pass from the center area where the moments are in effect and the rebars are not disturbed the sagging moment will be taken by this bar okay hogging moment will be taken by top bar but if you provide this in this case so this is the shear diagram of this beam okay this is the shear diagram of this beam so if you plug out a core drill at the column location near to the column location this beam will definitely fail okay so it is very important if you are passing a pipe through a beam it better be the center location and even after that you have to consider the stiffness modifier for these kind of beams now the strength of this beam is reduced actually the strength of beam is reduced it will deflect more okay in software there is no core cutting but in actual practice this beam will be drilled out so in this case practically it will deflect more because the entire core of it is reduced due to drilling and then now it will deflect more now the stiffness of this beam at the center location is reduced now it makes sense 
to reduce the strength of the beam. The same case will be applicable for cord cutting of slab cells. Here you can see it has been cord drilled. Now the strength, the stiffness of this slab is compromised. Now you have to reduce the strength of this slab to what amount? To 25% only. You will consider the strength of slab only to 25%. Here it makes sense. Okay? Here it makes sense. Hello? Yes. Sir, in this case, if we need to apply the stiffness modifier in the model, we can create two, two models, one with the stiffness modifier and one is without stiffness modifier. Yes. How we do we create? What is the general procedure? Like if we are adapting the stiffness modifier in the model, do we have to make two models? One it is also modifier. Okay, okay, I got your point. In the case of analysis, we are modeling, uh, we are uh, saving the files in two formats for analysis purpose and for design purpose. As per 1893 code, earthquake code, for design purpose, we do not have to consider. There is no clear indication in that code. For the design purpose, we have to consider stiffness modifier. So, as per that 1893 code, we can avoid okay concept of stiffness modifier in case of design, not analysis. In the analysis file, we have to consider the stiffness modifier, which makes sense because we are controlling the serviceability, the flexion criteria. But as per 16700, which is code for high rise buildings, buildings greater than 50 meter high. There we have to take the stiffness modifiers for analysis and design models as well, both the models. So from practical point of view, I would say that you have to form a single file only in which you will take the stiffness modifier for both case analysis and design. Okay, practically, if you are providing stiffness, if you are reducing the stiffness of particular beams and slabs in your model, then it should reflect in design results as well. So sections should receive heavy reports to form only a single model. This is a practical thing. Ideally, you can make model separate for analysis and separate for design. But practically, it is a hassle. You won't get any good results from this. Shantosh is asking, it means if we want any code in the beam to pass and use, then we have to uh, think of stiffness modifiers as well. Definitely, Shantosh. Definitely. Highly recommended. Reduce the stiffness of that beam if you are passing pipes to those beams. And it is very strictly passed from the center, not disturbing the bottom reinforcements. Bottom reinforcement of beam is very important. Okay? It will be taking the entire central load. There will be a sagging moment. Tension, bottom reinforcement are very important here. So do not disturb the bottom reinforcement. Generally what we do is, like, we already place a hollow pipe inside those. We pre-plan that we will pass these pipes to these beams. So we place a hollow pipe at the time of casting it. And then we pass these pipes later on. It is pre-planned. So we are not disturbing the bottom reinforcement of these. Never pass the pipe to these locations. Here look. The beam will fail. Even in case of if you are providing stiffness modifiers. Okay. Never pass it from the near the column joint. 